Fourth Fielding. I've been getting some really nice emails. Uh, people saying, hey, we'd love to see your P base, your 57 P base, along with your Heritage B15, Ampeg Heritage B15. Beautiful, beautiful combination. I have to tell you, it's one of the most co classic combinations in, in recorded history for, for pop music. Um, I'm happy to oblige. Uh, I love playing this bass and I love this amplifier. So um, some of the questions are what I'm using on my bass. So this is a 57 reissue. Uh, it is a Fender Japan reissue. And I have changed the pickup and I've done some work on the electronics, but uh, mostly just to bring the natural sound of the instrument out. The pickup is a Lawler pickup, L-O-L-L. L-O-L-L-A-R, Lawler, and they're out of the Pacific Northwest, I believe, in, in uh, the United States. Uh, check out their website. They do beautiful pickups. I use them in, on my jazz basses. I use them on my P basses. This, I think, is, a, is wound to a mid-60s spec wind, and it even has the, uh, the cloth cables and the whole thing, so I'm trying to get a vintage thing there. Uh, strings, uh, I am endorsed with D'Addario. That's probably not a big shock to most of you viewers because you know you've seen some of my videos. These are my D'Addario chromes. I go from 105 to a 50 on this bass. Um, really love that feel. These are about three months old. I like when they wear down a little bit. They have a great, great tone. And uh, of course, what's that clicking sound? That is a stellar tone, tone styler, which I get in all my, uh, my, my passive basses. So the amp, well, the amp uh, is, is this godlike amp that, uh, that, is, that was made. This is number 10, and when I refer to number 10, when, it, when they did the reissue of the Heritage, this is actually the 10th one made. I'm very proud of it. Even though I'm an endorser of Ampeg, I had to pay for this amp, and I know it cost me a lot of bread, but I love it, and I record with it all the time, and it's uh, kind of like an instrument, basically, not just an amplifier. So different tones that we can talk about. We're going to start off with me taking the foam out. In this case, a little piece of foam just came off. I don't know what to do with this little piece. Maybe all you people looking at it can tell me. Um, okay, so, basic technique. Let's open it up. Fender designed the bass in the mid-50s. Uh, I don't know if he thought that that tone that he was going for with the pickup would be the perfect marriage between the bass guitar and the bass drum. And that was really created some of those, the, some of the best Motown grooves and uh, R&B stacks, all that stuff, the Muscle Shoals stuff. That is the bass drum, drum kit, and basically a Fender. Um, in the case, uh, most were Fender P's, but there were plenty of Fender jazz basses in there too. Great tubby mid rangey tone. So we're going to warm it up a little bit. Really bringing the mid range out there. sounds terrific. Let's get really warm. Now the more bass I add to it, it seems like really the, the upper register completely opens up. commented, hey man, that's a Geezer Butler tone. Well, Geezer, Geezer is the man. Uh, love, love Geezer Butler, love Black Sabbath growing up. And I picked up a lot from Geezer's hand technique as well as John Entwistle's technique. And uh, this does get a Geezer tone if you listen to that first record. Ampeg, but that was either a Laney or a High Watt or some beautiful British made tube amplifier. So to get these tones, a lot of people write in and say, you know, I can get these tones out of a solid state. Well, you can, but to be honest with you, there is no substitute for the sound of tubes in your sound. And I realize this is an expensive amp and that everybody doesn't have money to go out and pay for it. I've been playing for a very long time and for the first many, many years, I could not afford a proper tube amp. I played with beautiful solid state amps 
my whole life. But what, what I think my point is, you can create these tones with your strings and you pick up in your hands, and you have to kind of mimic it. But if you get the opportunity to use a tube amplifier, uh, in, in my case a, a B15, you will see that this is a tone that really can't be replicated 100%. You can use pedals, and I do, uh, to try to give you that tube warmth, but there's really no substitute for big, beautiful transformers and tubes. So, how's the pick tone? Well, the pick tone is out of control, if you ask me, and I'm going to open it up this way. And uh, the first time I used this bass and this amp together, um, I thought I was going to have to put on a second pair of underwear because it was that good. Russell Shoals tone, David Hood, David Hood, one of the best, fantastic bass player, and uh, I think he used a jazz bass and not a P bass, but in his combination of tone, I always remember hearing that beautiful. a great Paul McCartney-ish tone and uh, there's lots of people saying well you gotta have a Rick and you gotta have uh, a Hoffner and you gotta play through a Vox well you don't I don't and um, I love those basses I have a Rickenbacker I have a Greckenbacker that I, that I play but but you can mimic the tone and again we're getting back to the point that you need to use your ears to try to emulate the tones that you're hearing if they're your, fam your favorite bass players or you're trying to create a tone you should always be striving for that tone you hear in your head it can make you mad. I've been playing bass for 33 years and I'm still not quite there yet. And then my idea of good tone changes. So, you know, to hear something like, uh, hello, goodbye. Again, this isn't the original gear, but you're able to emulate it by kind of listening to it. Using your palm, people have seen my other, my other videos, there's, there's techniques that I'm using, like palm muting. So if we really want to go loud, in the sense that we want it to be trebly and more modern, when I say more modern, I mean mid-60s as opposed to early 60s, I switch it over to my 66, I switch my bias to 66, and this is just this great clicky tone. Now that is a Beach Boys Carol K tone, absolutely. And it's a Joe Osborne tone too. So invasion tone uh, kinks it was that thuddy thuddy vox kind of tone that you would get just great So that's the 66 channel, and that's one of the coolest things about this amp. So I basically have two separate years in one amp. 
and uh, we we know that they're on they're not ex they're not they're not inexpensive so it's nice to get the very very most out of it now going back to my Motown again which is my 66 channel I'm going to add the foam back in and you'll really get that mid 60s tone James Jamerson a god this tone just marries so beautifully with the bass drum and I'll try to use my one finger hook tone Seven reissue Ampeg Heritage B15 beautiful combination of tones beautiful combination of instruments just you know and I'm calling this an instrument it really really is and uh, the idea is keep using your hands go to garthfielding.com you can check out my instructional video classic bass tones of the 60s and 70s I go into more of that and uh, check out some of my other videos the concept is keep striving for better tone and uh, you know keep experimenting